Hello and welcome, I'm your Code Monkey, and here let's check out the top new games made with Unity launch in January 23. This was an interesting month, for some reason there were tons of Chinese games released and a bunch of them actually did quite well, I guess maybe lots of people wanted to launch before the Lunar New Year, whatever the reason it just means more awesome games for you to play, although of course it also means more competition for you as a developer, so pros and cons. The reason why I make these videos is to show you everything that the engine can do, the only limit is really just your own skills and imagination, and the variety and the awesomeness of the game shown here really puts that to the test. All of these games are uniquely impressive, so the list is in no particular order, except for the number one game that is my personal pick of the month. By the way, I'm currently working on my own Steam game called Total World Liberation. It's a game with tons of systems, open world, survival, crafting, automation, strategy. Check out the Steam page, add it to your wishlist, and follow for that once. And actually, before we get to the Unity Top 10 list, let me give a quick honorable mention to a game that is actually made with Unreal that just came out this month. It's called Punch a Bunch. This was made by YouTuber Pontypants. It has been in development for almost three years. I've enjoyed watching the devlogs all this time, and thankfully the release is actually going really well. Already has almost 500 very positive reviews, so I'm really happy to see it succeed. Humble has just launched a new bundle full of synthy assets. As you probably know, I love their low-poly style. The bundle has tons of variety with 20 packs with the usual super dip discount at 97% off. Or if you prefer something more realistic, there's another one with tons of high-res military assets. Now this one is technically an Unreal pack, but you can just import into Unreal and then export the meshes which you can then import into Unity. Okay, so starting off the top 10 Unity list, and at number 10, here we have a very spooky and very unique game, Death and Water 2. Visually, it looks great, definitely one of the best looking games made with Unity. It's set in deep water with lots of sharks, some weird creatures hunting you down. For me, I'm absolutely not a fan of either horror or the deep sea, so this one is most definitely not for me. But if you do like horror games, then this seems like a really nice new entry in the genre. The game features a large open world you can explore to discover all kinds of secrets and gather some loot, and then it also has has a wave-based mechanic where some very spooky creatures hunt you down, and on top of that, there's a very scary kraken that mind controls the creatures, making for some really tense gameplay. The atmosphere for this game looks really perfect for exactly what it was trying to achieve, so if you're a fan of horror or the deep sea, then definitely check this out. Up next here we have an interesting one called Juno New Origins. You might know it by its previous name, Simple Rocket 2, so it's a sequel to that very popular game from years ago, but in the meantime the game expanded so much that the devs felt it needed a brand new name. It's a sandbox building game, features very realistic physics, you can build your own spaceship, you can build a car, a plane, or just about anything. You can also write code to get the vehicles working exactly as intended, you can even customize the solar system itself, you can play in sandbox or in nice career mode. And of course, it has excellent modding support, so you can see what the community has built and share your own creations. So if you're a fan of complex, very deep games, definitely give it a look. I'd love to play it out to check out just how deep that programming goes. Next here is yet another one that also has a nice devlog on YouTube. It's Atrio the Dark Wild. The first devlog was three and a half years ago, and right now it just left early access. It has a very distinct visual sound. It's a bit strange, but it certainly does stand out. The game has some nice automation and survival elements. You spawn a brand new disposable android body every time. You go out and explore the world set up machines to automate farming, crafting, foraging, and a bunch more. You dodge some creature attacks and capture them to use in your own factories. Definitely has a very unique, very strange theme, and people do seem to like it with already over 300 very positive reviews. For some VR, here is a recent huge hit, it's Gorilla Tag. I still haven't gotten fully used to this much movement in VR, so I'm definitely envious by how much fun all of these people are having. The game looks simple, but also really awesome. The movement is all based on your arms, so grab forward and pull back in order to move or jump. Just that movement system gives you a ton of freedom. The levels are all very unique and look very fun to move around in. The game modes are simple, either run away or catch someone, but despite being simple, it looks like it really works. There's tons of positive feedback and already has 800 very positive reviews, which is definitely a huge amount for a VR game. Then here we have one that I'm actually surprised that it's the first time that I've seen this idea. It's called Definitely Not Fried Chicken, so right away, excellent name. The name alone combined with the game idea will definitely ensure this game finds some success. Basically, it's Breaking Bad the game. You have a business growing and selling some, let's say, less than legal goods, and then you have various fronts, including obviously a chicken shop. It's definitely a very good idea, having a front makes for some nice easy comments and the game itself also seems solidly made. You have tons of options for all the kinds of goods you can grow and sell, there's lots of building types you can own, not just restaurants, you can make money legally or illegally, you can manage your employees, manage the growing, delivering and selling of all the goods. It just launched in early access so there are some rough parts but the core of it does seem solid. Then for something a bit more chill, here is Sailing Era. It's a RPG with some gorgeous art. You sail the seas, do some trading business, fight some bandits or find some love in a tavern. There are multiple characters in your party, each 
each with their own levels and skills. It's one of those RPGs where your party follows your character in a line, then you can fight battles out at sea, or board their ship and engage in some nice turn-based combat. It's already a huge hit with over 2,000 mostly positive reviews. Then if you're into card games, here is Theseus Protocol, really gorgeous art and animations, the music also sounds excellent, it's a deck-building roguelike, so you gather your troops and your cards in order to engage in battle, it also has a nice non-linear narrative that you can uncover more and more through every run, and it also has some persistent progression for your deck. The presentation is definitely excellent, and so far the early access reviews do seem to like it. Next here we have Farlanders. It's a very interesting, extremely complex looking city builder game, lots of systems and lots of buildings at your disposal. It's also turn based, which I'm not entirely sure how that is supposed to work, so I'm certainly intrigued by that. There are lots of buildings, lots of complexity, your job is to terraform Mars to make it habitable for your colonists, you can build on the surface of Mars, but then you can also dive deep underground and build some more. You can explore a deep tech tree and make Mars your brand new home. It has a demo if you'd like to try it out. Then here's an interesting one that came right at the end of January, it's called Inquilinati. Right away you can see a very interesting visual, looks like medieval manuscripts with some weird creatures. It makes me wonder if they decided to delay the launch in order to not release around the same time as Pentiment. The game definitely does look really good. The game itself is a turn-based strategy game. It features quite a nice amount of verticality, the levels aren't just horizontal planes, so you can climb up some ladders and push down some creatures. It has a nice single player mode where you explore a map and gather more creatures and skills. And it also has a multiplayer skirmish mode where you can choose an army, skills, a map and battle it out with a friend or a foe. And at number one for my personal pick of the month, here is a really interesting game called Rising Front. Looking at the massive scale in the trailer, you might think it's a multiplayer game, but nope, it is single player. You command massive armies in World War I with in first person. It features a ton of mayhem, some massive scale with ragdolls flying all over the place. It has intelligent AI, a cover system, lots of trenches, some real-time building and more. It's being built by a solo developer and already has over 500 very positive reviews, so this one looks like it's going to be a huge hit. At least mechanically, it does look very unique. So if you enjoyed playing Verdun like I did, and you would like a single player version, then this looks really interesting. I definitely want to give it a try. Alright, so that's 10 awesome new games made with Unity launch in January 23. I hope this list helps you see how the Unity engine is capable of building anything, the only limits are really just your own skills and imagination. Check out my own Steam game, Total World Liberation, and add it to your wishlist. Alright, hope that's useful, check out these videos to learn some more. Thanks to these awesome Patreon supporters for making these videos possible. Thank you for watching and I'll see you next time.